Avatar is back to sponsor this video and to promote using bad math when we buy stuff on the internet. If I spend a hundred dollars, I get twenty-five dollars back. I'll have a hundred and twenty-five dollars. It's like infinite money. Use the promo code FUNGUY to save up to 25% on your purchases with the Legend of Mushroom. Today, we're going to talk about monster mechanics. And yeah, I know it seems simple. Just send mounted at monster. Bigger buffs equals bigger monster. But there's quite a bit more to it. And some things may surprise you. Like, did you know monsters don't even directly attack your troops? Or that dragon gear is better than civ gear? Or that monster wound talent? doesn't even help you defeat bigger monsters. Sometimes even sending more troops will give you more wounds on monsters. And we're gonna cover all of that, including the mechanics for each individual type of monster in the game, the hidden buffs that Ebony has when you're fighting monsters, and how to use this monster simulator to determine the exact number of troops you need to take out any monster without wounds. So let's begin. All right, first thing is I should demonstrate how this monster simulator works. As I'm going to be referring to it throughout the video, at the end of the video, I'm going to give detailed instructions on all the different things it can do for you. But let's use an example. So here I found a B10. And we're going to just attack this B10 with no general. Um, and we're going to send about 20,000 troops. Okay. So here we go. 20,000. Okay. And attack. Yes, I, I'm aware. All right, great. So now, poof. What the? Okay, classic, classic Ebony. All right, good. we just need to find a better. Mo oh, well, here we go. Here we go. A level three Sphinx, perfect. All right. Uh, so this should take. This is a little bit stronger, so we're gonna send. Um, more troops. We'll send about a million troops this time. All right, perfect. All right, good. We'll send this. Dand, it's gone. Great. That's awesome. All right. So I found these two level one Cerebrus. So hopefully, this will work for us. We're gonna send about a hundred thousand troops each. So let's take away my general. One hundred thousand. Yes. Okay. Hopefully it hits this time. All right. For the other one, I used the monster simulator to determine the exact number of troops I need to take out this monster in one hit, and that was. 441,741. Okay, yes. So let's look at this. So the first one, we had 1,575 wounds. And when we take a look at the monster simulator, that's exactly how much it determined with our buffs. Also, when we take a look at our other hit, we see that we had no wounds. That's because we sent the exact number of troops to kill. So let's talk about what's actually going on in the simulator. After we put our variety of buffs we have for our different troops, including your monster, and uh, we have some miscellaneous right here. This is because Ebony doesn't tell you all your buffs, so you kind of have to adjust it a little bit. And then there's rally buffs. This is so you can choose from solo and rally down here. And this debuff for troops, this is going to only apply for world boss. So if you have more than 250% debuff on the troops, you could just put 250. For the debuff on monsters, you'll put it right here. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in the future. Uh, down here, you choose your tier, uh, what type of troop, and the number of troops you are sending. And it's going to give you a troop modifier depending on what type of monster you're fighting. Uh, for down here, you're going to choose your monster. So we put 491. That is the number for Cerebrus. Cerebrus. Stress on the first syllable. And so level 1 has a modifier of 1. You find that down here in the monster tab. And here we have 491 for Cerebrus. 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 And it is a level 1. So we have three of them right here. And if you want to put like a Ymir, you'd put 490, a Ymir 5. This is going to apply all the attack, defense, and HP of that monster so that you can use the simulator correctly. Over here is going to give your overall 
troop stats after all the buffs are applied. This is going to give the monster stats after all the debuffs are applied. And this is going to tell you the minimum number of troops to one hit KO a monster. Now, in my example, I put 741. That is because I don't have a tenth of a troop to send at the monster. So you always want to put one above whatever you see here. Uh, if I put 740, I would have wounds. We go over here. This is going to tell you what actually happened in that battle with the Cerberus and the 100,000 tier 13s. The battle had four uh, rounds with the monster, and it took four rounds for the ground troop to even get to the monster. So it really was about eight rounds, and we'll talk about that later. And you see that the wounds were 15,743. Well, Ebony only wounds you 10% of whatever you're wounded, so uh, I got 1,575. And if you have the talent, it drops down to half of that. The only other thing down here is something I'm going to talk about again later in the video is a true attack buff calculator. This is going to be more accurate than anything else you could find on here. This is just going to tell you exactly what your troop buffs are and I'm going to show you how to use that later on in the video as well. So how this is actually able to determine your wounds and also how many troops it takes to take out a monster is using the same formula that I shared in my very first video. And that is when you have an HP of a troop or monster, you would subtract that by the overall damage. And that formula says the damage is your attack squared times the number of troops you have times the modifier. And you divide that by attack plus defense. And what's important is that attack plus defense part. What it's doing is it's showing you how much defense is going to debuff your overall attack. Now that's important to understand when you're choosing refines and you're choosing your generals on trying to compare is it better to have more HP or defense. Generally it's always going to be better to have more HP because defense is going to be better against lower tier troops. Like let's say a tier 1 defense or something like that. Like the defense stat is going to be better against them because they have lower attack. When we take a look at monsters, monsters have a huge attack. You know, we're just going to take a look at all of these. Like they have such a high attack on all of these. So the defense is not going to do much of anything. If we actually take a look at the simulator, and we're having ground right here. If I was to just add defense to this, let's say this miscellaneous one, it's at 30. If I just add two more zeros, I'm, I'm giving the ground 3,000 defense. Let's see how much the wounds are going to change when the ground has 3,000 extra defense. One. One troop. That's it. Defense, this is why players have noticed that defense doesn't seem to help with their wounds when it comes to monsters. It's because defense doesn't really do anything because the attack is so high on monsters. Now, if this was a common monster, and I'll just kind of give you an idea of the common monsters over here, like the robbers, bandits, berserkers, and all that. They work a little bit differently. They have a lower attack, but they actually have a certain number of troops, where most of the boss monsters are just one troop. Now, defense would actually apply to these, but, you know, common monsters are irrelevant after a few months of playing the game. So many of you wouldn't even bother with this, but that is the only time defense does apply. That was troop defense. But what about monster defense? I went ahead and changed this to a more realistic scenario where you have tier 14 mounted, about two and a half million of them against a big monster. Probably too big, but it's a typhoon. Uh, we have 2100% mounted attack buff right now. And when it comes down to here, you'll see that you need 10 million troops to take out a typhoon in one hit without any wounds. And right now, this player would not be able to defeat that typhoon. That have all of their troops would be gone. So what if we debuff the defense? Now, I made a post on Discord saying, hey, everybody should at least get one Beowulf as a, an assistant for their monster general. So if we were to use his covenant and subtract defense by 10%, you'll see what a difference 10% defense would make. So it's 10 million down here, and it basically subtracts the number of troops you need to take out of this typhoon by 1 million. And you actually are able to defeat this typhoon now. Uh, you have a lot of wounds, but you're actually you're actually able to defeat him. Now that's just 10%. That's from a in a Beowulf that is your assistant that has that covenant. Uh, you could also use a variety of other generals that do the debuff. Now these debuffs don't always stack with each other, so you have to be careful about that. Now let's add Rurik Bracer. This is something a free-to-play player can eventually get, like one little Civ gear if he wants to focus on monsters, and that gives you an extra 25% debuff. 
So that's going to give us an overall of 35%. So you went from 10 million troops to have to take out this monster to 6.7 million troops. And now you have much, much less wounded because now you're able to take out this monster a lot earlier. And if you were to remove uh, four pieces of your gear and change it out for dragon gear, this is now going to be 45% debuff, which, as you can tell, is uh, half of what we started out with. You know, so this is uh, it's very important. And this maxes out at 50%. The attack, this maxes out at 50%, I believe, but I wasn't able to test that fully. So the obvious question is, okay, well... Why would I want to choose dragon gear? I'm going to have lower buffs right here. So what exactly is 10% that the dragon gear is giving you? And we're not even talking about the attack debuff that the dragon gear is giving you. Just, just the defense. So let's take a look at uh, these percentages. Right now we have 5.7. We've just changed this to 35. It's 6.7. So a million troops. If I was to put 195 right here. That is essentially what 10% debuff is giving you. It's giving you almost 200% on your attack buff. It's kind of equivalent. It's not exactly. But if you're losing 100%, 150% buff on your gear just by switching it to dragon, you're actually still going to do better against monsters. Don't do this for PvP, please. But against monsters, you're actually going to do quite good. Now, the great thing about debuffs is whatever player joins the rally with the highest debuff. So you have one player that has a Rorik Bracer plus a Beowulf plus Dragon Gear on that specific general. You're going to make whoever is doing that rally have a good 45% monster defense debuff. And this is why sometimes you rally a monster and you got no wounds and then you rally the same monster and you got wounds. It's because someone probably joined your rally and changed your debuffs on it. I did a test with Zhao. Ciao. And Zhao is a fully specialized assistant general who has a flexible specialty. Zhao was once considered the best PvP mounted general in the game. And compared it to Bayo, who just had some skill books and his first covenant. And when I attacked a level 3 Bayar knight, rolled in Zhao with 732,921 troops. They could not kill the Bayar knight in one hit. They had wounds. With Roland and Bayo, 678,325 troops were able to kill it in one hit. And that's a difference of about 55,000 troops. And that just goes to show you how much better of a monster general Bayo is over a fully specialized PvP general like Zhao. Now, Bayo isn't just for monsters. You could use Bayo for PvP. He's not the best PvP assistant general, but he is better than Zhao. And if you were to compare him to someone like Andre, he has a little bit less attack than Andre, but he has more HP. And March size is close, but he also has about 4% less March size. So Andre is definitely the better PvP general, but not by much. So if you happen to have a Beowulf and you're a player that primarily focuses on monsters, uh, he doesn't make for a bad PvP general if you want to invest in him. So let's talk about what's actually happening in a monster battle. The monsters start on one side of the battlefield, keeping to themselves, being nice, peaceful creatures. And it takes your ground troops about four turns to actually reach the monster. Now, if you have high tier siege, the high tier siege are going to attack the monster first. And your mounted and lastly are your archers are going to reach the monster and attack it. Now, monsters don't attack your troops. They only attack when provoked. So they will only do counterattack damage to whatever troops attacking it. So if you have wounded, that means your troop attacked the monster. This is important because that means layers don't do anything to monsters, unlike a PvP battle. It's also important because it shows you when you send a full march at the monster, you'll notice that your high tier siege and your ground troops all have wounds uh, before your monster are actually able to kill that monster. There's a myth that all the troops of a particular type have to be wounded before the next type of troop will attack the monster. Uh, for example, all of your ground troops have to be dead before your mounted troops will attack. And that's not true. Uh, basically, if you were to send a mixed march, ground and archer, the ground will attack the monster four times before the archers are able to reach the monster to attack it. The ground will have additional counterattack wounds, but it, they don't all have to be gone. Another myth is that the monarch talent that reduces your monster wounded helps you defeat bigger monsters. 
and it's not true. It really just reduces the amount of wounds you take. The only time you lose against the monster is when all of your troops die while fighting the monster. Now, if you lost 1 million troops while fighting a monster, Ebony gives you back 90% of your troops. It's the same way how uh, Wounded to Death or Death to Wounded works with uh, a normal PvP battle. Ebony is really just saying, okay, you lost a million troops, we're giving you 90% back, and that way you only lost 100,000 troops. If you had the Monarch talent, that would change from 100,000 to 50,000, and that's all it does. So let's talk about a couple different types of monsters. Obviously, we talked about the boss monsters. Common monsters, the only difference is they have lower stats, but they have more number of troops. Boss monsters are typically one really strong troop. Common monsters will have a variety. So when we look at normal boss monsters, you'll see that it's just usually one troop with really high stats. Now that's important to know because Right now, sure, common monsters are not relevant, but Ebony may introduce a bigger monster that has a lot of troops, that has different stats, and it may be good to know that how that mechanic works. Now, with these having multiple troops, counterattack works a little differently. With a normal boss, they're going to do the same amount of damage to you no matter what. With these troops, the more troops that you kill, the more counterattack damage you're going to take. So yes, if you send more troops at a monster, a common monster, and you don't defeat it, you'll have more wounds than if you would have sent less. And I'll show you that with a demon crossbowman right here. I'm getting more wounds because I sent more troops. That's just how counterattack damage works. Counterattack damage, you will get wounds depending on how many troops of a layer you kill without actually being able to finish off that layer. But here we have the world boss monsters. The attack, defense, and HP are all going to be the same with the exception of Behemoth. Behemoth has 600. That is because the Behemoth is weak against mounted, and we always send mounted. So Ebony had artificially increased the HP because otherwise we'd kill the behemoth a lot sooner. They only get debuffed by troops. Monster debuffs do not apply to world boss monsters. And if we take one of them, we'll look at Lord of Lava. That's 186 right here. So let's go over here and put 186. What's actually going on with Lord of Lava is that it's going to get reduced by the defense. See how it's 250%? It's only reducing it from 50 million to 49,750,000. So it's already reducing it by 250,000 if you have the full debuff on it. What we have to do with attack is take the base attack value and divide it by 500. That's going to give us this weird number right here, 6,856,000. So what's going on is every time you have a percentage of attack reduction, on whichever monster it is, it's just going to multiply that number times this. So we're gonna times this by 250, and then we're gonna subtract this number from the attack. And that's what's going on in this formula, saying that, oh, if, the, if we have that number, and I just kind of rounded it, if we have that number, we're just going to multiply it by whatever the uh, debuff is, which is 250. So just to give a demonstration of a world boss monster, here we have 1 million ground troops, tier 13s again. And we come down here, we'll see that they lasted a total of 49 rounds with this damage right here. Well, you divide this damage by 100 to get the damage that you get in your report from attacking a world boss monster. If we were to change this to 2.4 million troops, you'll notice that the battle lasts longer than 100. These battles will only last 100 rounds. So anything below this is irrelevant. And in fact, it took four turns for your ground to even get to the monster. So we're not even looking at 100. We're actually looking at 96. And this is the actual damage that your troops did to the monster. Now you may notice by looking at the report, it's a little off and that's due to rounding issues. And also the fact that I'm probably not using the right number for this, but it's within 1% and it's going to really help you increase the amount of damage you do. Now talking about other monsters, uh, there's so many different types of monsters. So we already looked at common and we looked at the boss monsters, even resource boxes. These are considered monsters in the game's coding. You have your attack, defense, and HP. These are all equivalent to a B6, a manticore. I don't understand why, it just is. And there's a funny glitch in the pyramid event where after defeating a pyramid, these boxes would show up. You were actually able to rally those boxes because they were considered a monster. Um, don't understand why, but that's just how it is. You have all your Vikings in here. Now, the bosses that I want to talk about are the different alliance bosses. What's 
Uh, interesting about them is they have some of the highest attack in the game, uh, below the King Kong ones that we had, and they have zero defense. Now, this is important because this means that defense debuffs do nothing for them. They're going to give you the exact amount of damage that you're actually doing to this, and the attack is so high that just like Intimacy after 30, you're only going to last one round. What's important about this is you don't need defense or HP, so you shouldn't waste your defense and HP buffs on this. Also, there's no point in reducing the attack because you're not going to be able to survive regardless. And same thing with defense. You're not going to be able to reduce defense because it's already zero. So don't be like me and waste all of your buffs, your temporary 10-minute buffs on the Alliance boss monster. All you need is the attack and also the debuffs such as your ace hunter or your mushroom to reduce monster defense. Speaking of mushrooms, let's pretend this is a good segue to today's sponsor, Aptoid. Aptoid recently has been promoting a new game called Legend of Mushroom, and I was, to be honest, skeptical to try a new cell phone game. It actually opened my eyes on what a game looks like when the developers care about their product. Within the first week, they're sending out surveys asking players what they thought of the events, how they can improve them, and they wanted real, honest feedback and not just from the heavy coiners. And it's an idle game, which is great because now you don't need to pay for a separate service to not play your game because no one wants to find monsters and rally monsters and go to farm tiles every hour and complete a hundred different events. And God, Vikings are the bane of my existence. And like, there's no reason to tell your boss that you have a digestive issue that causes you to have to use the toilet for two hours at 10 a.m. every Wednesday just so you can play BOG. And what it lacks in these time-consuming events, it makes up in a really complex and organic social structure. You have your wall chat, alliance chat, and your whispers, but it also has this really cool feature called moments where you get to share something with everybody in the community. It's like a built-in game Twitter. It's really cool. And you can customize your avatar with a picture or customize your character. I personally like making my character look very cute and weak. And if you do have some app coins left over, I really suggest just paying for the ads. That is the one must purchase on the game. And other than that, it's a nice chill game. If you want to coin, I have a Aptoid code for Legend of Mushroom. It's called Fun Guy. And if you want, add me in the game and I'll see you there. Back to the content. So now that we've talked about the Alliance boss, let's talk about the hidden buffs Ebony has. And that's why I had to make this miscellaneous tab. When I did all my testing, I had buffs that I did not have accounted for. So I had to put this tab on here. Now, when I did a lot of this testing, I would not use the general and I would not use blazons. I'd unequip the blazons because blazons give you tenths and hundredths of percentages and it completely throws this off. Just to give you an idea, if I just add 1% to my attack, it, went, it changed by 500,000. And I had to make sure everything was accurate for this to work. I figured out I had these hidden buffs. I don't know where they're coming from. I believe Evni had some buffs that say that they're basic or say that they're marching, but they're actually monster. And because I don't know, we'd have them unaccounted for. The rest of these are pretty easy. Basic and march, you could find without a general, you could find them in your details tab. Monster's a little bit more complicated. You generally would have to look at your civilization treasure, uh, your beauties that you're tickling, and your military academy. Uh, and rally, you could also find in your military academy or... You know, it, th this is a little bit complicated too. However, I made this true attack buff calculator. Now this was possible because with an alliance boss, it tells you how much damage you're doing. And it's only gonna be one attack because it will take you out in one attack. So what you do is you put the boss damage right here, you put the number of troops that you sent, and you need to put the flat attack buff that you used. Now this is something that you need to look at your refinements for. You also need to make sure you look at your flexible specialties and give the exact number of flat attack right here. What it does is it then calculates a percentage that has your marching, rally, basic, monster. Rally only if you did a rally. Make sure nobody joins. And it gives you an exact number of all your attack buffs. Now this was not easy for me because I had to relearn how to do quadratics to figure this out. It's not fun, but this gives you an accurate percent overall that you can just copy and paste right here. So with this number, I'm able to determine the exact number of troops for any monster that I put in here. 
so defense and HP are going to be much more challenging to get exact numbers on them. Uh, however, most people just care about how many troops it takes to kill a monster. Now, if you notice these extra tabs down here, that is because when you're testing this out, to me, it's just easier to make an extra tab for your test. So here's the Lord Lava, the Bayard Knight when I did it with the Roland, and the Bayard Knight when I did it with the Bayo. The reference table, this is just going to have all the different values of all the different attack modifiers, depending on what troops you're using. And the last thing I want to talk about is I have this extra tab. This has a lot of different monsters in here. And it's kind of more of the original. I just did not take it out because I didn't know if this was going to have anything that was relevant. This was in a different monster file. So I don't know if there's something more accurate in here or more accurate in the other one. And this also has a lot of the abandoned monsters down here that have something slightly different with them, whether they cost more stamina or less stamina or something like that. So I kept this in here because it's just more information. Now, if you're using this, I suggest that you make your own uh, calculator and you get rid of all the stuff that you don't need. Like, I don't think anybody cares about all of these boxes and resources. I'm keeping it in here because it might be useful to somebody. But you could hide all these tabs or delete all the tabs. Uh, just for now, I kept it all in here so that we have all the different information in here in case something's actually relevant. There's a lot of strange translations when uh, going through here. So they're not going to be 100% accurate. And you might be attacking this hypocritical knight and you might get confused when it might be this hypocritical knight. Now, this one doesn't seem like it exists because it doesn't spawn, so it's a little strange. Uh, however, they have different stats. So if you're getting weird numbers, make sure that there's not a, another monster with the same name. And you can just look up monsters by their name, by their attack, by their level. I do a level a lot, actually. That's It's very useful to me. But again, make this however works for you. Thanks for sticking around that entirely too long of a video. The Monster Simulator is located in my new Discord server under Ebony TKR Spreadsheets, and it's currently pinned there right now. I wasn't planning on making a Discord, however, I was banned from several Ebony Discords by a prominent yet somewhat ignorant player in the community who claimed my videos were misinformation. Yeah, more on that in a future video. However, this will allow me to share information with the community and better assist everyone with questions in the game, Especially since my messages are kind of ridiculous right now. Ebony is a terrible game, but you guys and this community, you really make it worth it. So, thank you. Please stand aside for people who actually have money with us. Next, please.